and welcome back. All right then, today we're going to be looking at two beasts, uh, two 16-bit gaming systems up against each other. You guessed it, the title says it all, the Mega Drive versus the Super Nintendo. Now, some of you might be thinking, you're crazy, you're absolutely crazy. Everyone knows that the Super Nintendo is better graphics, more colour, better sound, it should win every time. But I also know a lot of people out there that like the Mega Drive and think the Mega Drive was a better system. A lot of the time it comes down to the games. Which games are better on there? So I'm going to have a look at a couple of games side by side next to each other and find out, you know, which ones think or seem to be the best game. Is it all about the best game really or is it all about the one that gave you the most enjoyment? So let's have a look at Mega Drive versus the Super Nintendo. So, first one I've got on the list, so we're going to go with Virtual Racing for the Mega Drive. Now, Virtual Racing, okay, there's a little bit of cheating there, it had an SVP chip in there. But, I mean, let's face it, good use of colours, the frame rate was brilliant. Music, a little bit clunky, and the uh, sound effects or the speech in there, yeah, a little bit chippy, a bit, um, but... Overall, uh, you know, uh, the frame rate was fantastic, very smooth game indeed, lots of replayability because you can play all three levels and then once you've finished that, you can play the mirrored version. And I still think this was an outstanding game, especially for back in its time. Okay, it was ridiculously expensive, but uh, I mean, overall, two player, split screen, no slowdown, well, maybe a little bit, but... Overall, that this is just an absolute quality game. It was way above its time. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, when it came out, it was at 99.99. But that aside, now, yeah, it's pretty cheap. And if you are thinking of starting to collect a game, yes, definitely worth one. I put this in, like, my, um, you know, top 10 Easter eggs or top 10 must-haves for the Mega Drive if you're thinking of starting a collection off. But Virtual Racing was way above its time. Overall, this scored or something like I think it was about 90%. And it definitely gives you that fix if you want some 3D racing kind of game on the Mega Drive. No special requirements, just take, get the cartridge, plug it into Mega Drive, and it plays. Quality game, absolutely fantastic. Now, I've pit it up against Stunt Race FX. Well, okay, so Stunt Race FX, same again. You've got yourself a uh, 3D kind of guy, uh, you know, driving. Now this one, it's got more tracks in there. A lot more colours as well. This does use the FX chip. Uh, three cars to choose from. You've got the Coupe, the 4x4 and the Formula 1. And then once you've completed so many levels, you've also got uh, the motorbike, which goes thrashing around the corner. Some say the frame rate on this one drops a little bit. The screen size is not as big where it's full screen on Virtua Racing. Um, split screen, yeah, it does slow down a little bit on split screen, but it does give you a lot of play and a lot of game value. This is an absolutely quality game. Um, loads to choose from as well. Um, you know, this is like what we're talking, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 laps all together uh, and they're, they're one of them games that keeps you coming back for more than more if you can look beyond the choppiness you will tend to find that this is uh, an absolute quality game probably one i would have as a hidden easter egg or definitely must have in your collection now what do i think would win out of this one i'm gonna have to give it to Virtual Racer, yeah, uh, it just pips it at the post. I love Storm Racer effect, but Virtual Racer just brings back a bit more memory. Okay, it might be nostalgia. So the next one we're going to go with this is controversial. Now we've got Streets of Rage. Well, what can I say? Three players to choose from. Two player, simultaneous, user Kashiro did the music, what do you expect? Eight levels in there, and it's a nice little trick at the end of it as well, where if you decide to choose the wrong answer at the end of level eight, it takes you back a whole new level, and you've got to do it all over again. But two player, simultaneous, nice, lots of special moves in there. A good power up where you pull the uh, or special move where you pull call the police guy comes up and fries everything on the screen. This was one of my games where I spent many many winter nights inside playing this two player, 
I did really enjoy this one. Streets of Rage is a classic. And if you have a guess, I've pitched it up against Final Fight. Yay! Well, I mean, Final Fight did do a great effort. A lot of people say this is probably a really crap conversion. For me, I did enjoy this one. I did really enjoy this one. Okay, it's not two players simultaneous. And all right, fair enough. They have taken one of the characters out there. Depending on which version you get, it's Cody and Hagar or Hagar. Or if you get Final Fight Guy, you've got Guy and Hagar. Um, five, six levels to choose from. There was a level taken out from the arcade. Um, very close. There is a bit of border, uh, one at the top, one at the bottom. So they shrink it down, especially when you run it on a PAL Super Nintendo, you do notice it very lesser box. Uh, very close to the arcade, me personally. A lot of challenge in there. A game that we're coming back for more. Uh, but I'm going to have to give this one too. It's a no-brainer. This one goes to Streets of Rage. <laughs> Next one we've got is Ghouls and Ghosts. Yes, well, I'm sure you can tell what's coming next. But Ghouls and Ghosts, one of my favourites. One of the very first games to come out for the Mega Drive. Arcade conversion, large sprites, large bosses to choose from. Very hard to play. Um, and go, you know, there is a, a novice or beginner level in there where you can practice. I think it's the first three levels. And then after that, you've got to go all the way to the end. Defeat a giant bee like creature, go back, get your psycho fire or your psycho cannon. Once you've got your psycho cannon, you go all the way to the last level and you get to meet Loki this time and you get to kill him. Very challenging, but the graphics are absolutely quality on this. Very close to the arcade. The music, very close indeed. Definitely worth your money and definitely one for your collection. And as if you couldn't tell, I've put it up against. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Well, what can I say? This is another one of my favourites, actually. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Now, it's kind of like a, a sequel to Ghouls and Ghosts. I think they did release it in the arcade, but it's pretty much the same as the Super Nintendo version. Or uh, I think it was the Super Nintendo version. I've seen a few where they've had it in the arcade, but you know it's that version. Um, large sprites. Good use of colours in this one. The music, very orchestral indeed. The Super Nintendo does really make a good effort on playing this game. Um, I do find loads of extra power-ups in this one, different power-ups as well, the different levels I've chosen. They've really sort of, it's like Ghouls and Ghosts remix, or, uh, and what can I say, but for the Super Nintendo. Now, overall, I'm going to have to say, on this one, the winner has got to be Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Next up, we have got Mega Turrican for the Mega Drive. Yeah, well, now Turrican first came out on the Amiga. They did Turrican 2 um, and it really kicked off. It was your run and gun um, and the Amiga did a really great job. But then they brought it to the Mega Drive, called it Mega Turrican, rehashed it. They kind of kept the sound in there similar. Um, now, this one is one of my favorites. One of the greatest run and gun games there are out there. I do love Mega Turrican, especially for the Mega Drive. It's a great game, lots of powers to choose from, very arcadey kind of fight feeling to it. Music, amazing. Graphics, great use of colours as well. Not much slowdown. If you do like your running guns, I have put this in my top 10 running guns for the Mega Drive. Definitely worth checking it out. And well, what can I say? I've put it up against Super Turrican for the Super Nintendo. Now, Super Turrican, very similar. The layouts are different, but the main sprite is very similar. You do have a very similar power-ups as well. Music is very similar. How they've done this one, they've rehashed it a little bit compared to the Mega Drive. Now, this is very fast-paced, running gun game. And overall, I find the music in the Super Turrican for the Super Nintendo probably one of the best I've ever heard. 
This is an absolutely fantastic game. Definitely worth checking it out. It is very expensive though, so maybe recommend seeing if you can, uh, you know, get uh, borrow a copy or you know actually look at it first. Uh, look at a demo if you can. So what would I say the winner is? Uh, as we pipped at the post, but Super Turrican for the Super Nintendo has got to be the winner. Now we're moving on to uh, the uh, iconic games for each one. So the first one I've chosen is Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, what can I say? This was where it all kicked off. It's 1991. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog came in. I remember looking these in magazines and seeing the graphics. It was amazing. I couldn't believe the Mega Drive could do this. Now, a lot of the time when you see the graphics and then you actually play the game, it feels different whereas Sonic actually stuck to its roots you see the graphics in a magazine you can't wait to get that game so you actually go out and buy it and when you first played it it's even better very smooth scrolling indeed great use of colors the sound is everybody knows the sound the music you whistle it to yourself all the time there's a lot of uh, this is where like I say all started but fine, you know, um, I mean, for me, Sonic the Hedgehog was uh, you know, probably one of the peaks for where the Mega Drive was going. It really kicked off things and made a great impression. Excellent game. I think everybody's tried it. If you haven't, give it a try. And I'm going to have to put this up against Super Mario World. Well, some of you are like, well, there's no competition there. Super Mario World, what can I say? Absolutely classic game. Um, the first game they released here in Europe or here in the UK for the Super Nintendo 96 levels this is an adventure but in a platform format they really outshone themselves when it came to Super Mario World or Super Mario Brothers 4 which was kind of the subtitle but I mean let's face it excellent graphics the Super Nintendo really pushed itself where they really showed off what the graphics could do, what the sound could do, and at the same time give you a lengthy platform adventure. You could always say it's got some RPG elements in there, but they're straightforward. You know, you've got your fire flower, your leaf, and even Yoshi. When we first get to see Yoshi, I mean, what can I say? This game does it all. So, overall, those two is a very close call, but I am going to have to give it to... Super Mario World. Next up, we have got Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Well, I mean, <laughs> what can I say? This was the, you know, it's like, which console did you get when it first came out? I remember uh, this came out for the Mega Drive. Yes, you did need a six button joypad. And I will be honest, I was a little bit let down, but not that much. I was let down. What I was let down by was the sound effects and the music was a bit grainy the sound effects was just oh god but after a while when you played it if you look at gameplay alone it is street fighter 2 and i absolutely bliss this one i played it and played it and played it played all the characters it's the first one that came out where you could actually play sagat um vega bison and balrog uh they really did it well i mean good use of colors you can see the difference but it's six four colors on the screen at once they really made a great effort. And this is a brilliant game. A lot of people will turn around and go, yeah, the Super Nintendo is better. But for me, I did enjoy playing this one. And I still come back to this every now and then and have a quick blast on it and just choose a character and go and see how far I can get on it. With a six button joypad. Highly recommend it if you've not tried it. And as you can't guess, I've put it up against street fighter 2 turbo now i've got to do turbo because that's got all the extra moves uh, extra characters in there same again sagat uh, vega bison and balrog and i did 
I think this one, once again, was a great game. I did notice as well, playing this one, and when it was sped up, uh, it was really good. And then I went back to the original Street Fighter and found, realized how slow it was. I couldn't believe how sorry it actually was. But anyway, Super uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo has got it what it all takes. So it's all built in. You didn't need to buy an extra pad. Uh, it worked with the Super Nintendo pad straight away. Um, smooth, great graphics, great sound. Yeah, the sound effects are better than the Mega Drive. Overall, which one would I say the winner? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with... That Super Nintendo version. Now we're getting into the nitty and gritty. I've gone on to... Castlevania. Well, what can I say? The new generation on the Mega Drive. This was a one that took ages to come out. They finally released it. And they did a really good job as well. Some of the sound effects, some of the music in here. You would have thought the Mega Drive could pull something off this good. And they really, really showed off some excellent graphics on what the Mega Drive could do. A good use of colours. It's very dark in some areas. They've chosen some really kind of zombified colours as well, which I thought was really good for the Mega Drive. The only Castlevania they did for the Mega Drive, and how many times can I say Mega Drive? I think I've said it about 20 times already, but I'm going to say it again. Yes, but Castlevania on the Mega Drive was a really uh, good game indeed. It really shone, and it showed off what the Mega Drive could do. Now, obviously... I've put this up against Castlevania 4, or Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. One of the very first releases for the Super Nintendo. Um, this one, they started out as kind of like a remake of Castlevania 1 for the NES, or the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now then, what do I think of this one? I remember first playing it. I wasn't super fussed about this one, to be honest. But then I actually got playing it and the first few levels are a bit like bland. But when you get into it, it really changed. They've got later on, you've got one of the tunnels. Uh, it actually looks like some real great parallax scrolling. Also, you've got one where you start swinging on lampshades and the whole world moves around or the whole room moves around. You've got really large bosses in some areas as well. The music is straight up Castlevania, some quality music. I think this is where it starts with the music on and they've rehashed them on some of the other Castlevania games. So let's have a think which one would I say wins out of these two. I'm actually going to go with Castlevania for the Mega Drive, a new generation. That one is definitely my winner. <laughs> And then finally, we have got uh, controversy, but Streets of Rage 2, well, what can I say? They really knocked it up a notch on the Mega Drive. Larger sprites, four characters to choose from, simultaneous. Uh, oof, God, what are we talking? Another eight levels, same again, Yuzo Kishiro does the music. This was, some people will say, the definitive version when it comes to Streets of Rage. Probably one of the best 16-bit beat-em-ups ever. That's my opinion, and I'm sure some of you probably say the same thing. But that aside, large sprites, great use of colour. You know, all the characters are in there. They've added... I say all the characters, yeah. <laughs> There's only the four anyway. But they've added some extra power-ups or power moves in there, which really do get you going. It's like... You really do like, you just want to go ahead and beat all the characters up on the screen. All the baddies keep beating them up when using your special moves all the time. It just gave you a good feeling that you're beating them up, you're sensing the good hit collision, hit detection, and it, you know, it gave you that meaty, grindy noise when you're beating them up, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. This is a quality game, you don't need me telling you about it, but Streets of Rage 2. There's only one thing we can put it up against, is going to be Final Fight 2. Yes. So, I mean, Final Fight 2, this time, they've turned it around. Yeah, you've got three characters to choose from. Um, 
And this time it's simultaneous play. So two of you can actually play at the same time. Um, they've added a bit more memory in here and there's more sprites on the screen. So finally they've got it right. Five uh, levels and, uh, sorry, six levels to choose from or six levels to go through. Um, they've given you this usual Capcom style where they've given you several, you know, easy, medium and hard. So there's a bit of replayability in there. You've got a choice where you can hit each other. If you do hit each other, it hurts. Or if you don't hit each other, it don't hurt. Um, and I think Final Fight 2, they did really improve on the Super Nintendo version of Final Fight 1. And they made this one very good indeed. But overall, what am I going to say? The winner is going to go to... Streets of Rage 2. So guys, there we have it, the Mega Drive versus the Super Nintendo. I mean, let's face it, yeah, the Super Nintendo was a cool, an awesome machine. I mean, 32,000 colours on the screen at once, very large sprites, loads of sprites on the screen. Like, was it eight channels, two of them, or one of them, or five of them, three of them could be, um, you know, used to sample things, whereas the Mega Drive could only have like 64 colours on the screen at once with some brilliant programming they could make that or improve that um you know some people were super nintendo some people were mega drive what was i i was i wanted both i saw the games i wanted both overall though it's down to i could turn around and go the snares is better than the mega drive or the mega drive is better than snares at the end of the day it's your opinion a lot of it comes down to games what kind of games you want you know have a look choose what games you like uh, which one would I say is the winner? I, I can't tell you, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. I love them both. And I love the games for the Mega Drive, and I love the games for the Super Nintendo. Worth checking out both if you've not tried it already. So, guys, I will say that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you soon.